Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. I'm Dax Holt. I am rolling solo today. Uh, Adam and I's schedules, we just could not get them to mesh up. So I drew the long straw, which means I get to hang out with my favorite people, which is all of you today by myself. So bear with me. I, I was thinking back. I don't know if I have or either one of us have ever done a solo episode in the history of Hollywood Raw um, there's always been a guest host. There's always been someone else to kind of banter with. Um, so this will be a first for Hollywood Raw history. <laughs> so hopefully I don't mess it up and then Adam yells at me. Uh, but anyway, today we are doing the Raw Rundown. It is Friday, which means we got to get you guys caught up on all things entertainment news. Everything that you may have missed throughout the week, Adam did put together a beautiful list for me, sent it over, and um, and we got you guys covered. A lot of good things on the, the rundown for today, um, and so I'm excited to, to chat with you guys about it. But obviously, you know, before we get into that, let us read a review, and by us, I mean me, uh, read a review uh, from one of you that has had it out over to Apple Podcasts, left a review. All right. This one comes from Crown Shyness, five stars. This pod is perfect. If you love pop culture, but you get annoyed with deep dives, then this pod is for you. I love their format. Wednesday, they do an interview with someone in the entertainment industry. Their guests range from stars who work behind the scenes, i.e. drivers, personal chefs, a PJ flight attendant, private jet flight attendant. They ask all the questions you want to hear and the ones you didn't think of. Fridays, they do a top 10 rundown of pop culture news. They give you just enough to keep you interested and not too much to bore you. Their chemistry is incredible and they complement each other perfectly. They are funny while being empathetic. I never met them, but I feel like they could be my cousins. Melanie from Carlsberg. Bad. Thank you, Melanie from Carlsbad. What a wonderful, perfect, perfect review. It's funny. I, I start to, I can't remember if I've read these reviews or I just read them when I pulled them. Uh, so if I've already read that one, I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a really good one. So uh, anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you, Melanie from Carlsbad. Really appreciate it. All right, let's jump right in to the Raw Rundown. Um, starting with number 10, Jenny McCarthy revealing a lot about the Playboy Mansion, about, you know, being there back in the 90s and what was really going on. She was basically on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen this week, and they, they got into what it was like at the Playboy Mansion. Uh, because if you remember, she kind of really got her start as a Playboy model, and then it rocket launched her into her MTV career, and then she did all this modeling, and then obviously now she is on uh, The Masked Singer, and she's had a very successful career throughout her history. But she basically said, oh my God, there was just so much sex going on at the Playboy Mansion back in the day. She said she remembers just like you'd walk through and there were people just getting it on in the grotto. There were people doing it inside. She goes, it was just kind of actually kind of gross. And she said there was there was times that there would be like 20 dudes to one gr girl, not like having sex, just in general, the ratio of men to women at the Playboy Mansion. And she goes, and a lot of them were just old. They were like 70 year old dudes walking around. Um, and she said there was just, it was like a Viagra party. Um, and it, it just wasn't the most ideal situation. Didn't really describe it as a, a really fun thing to be a part of. Um, but she said, you know, Polly Shore and Jack Nich Nicholson were regulars at the mansion. Uh, she did get into how she became a Playboy model, which is an interesting story. I guess she, she basically, Playboy was doing really good at the time, and she was kind of interested in seeing how it all worked. She showed up to the Chicago office and just said, how do I become a Playmate? And said, well, you don't walk in. Let's start there. You have to send in a photo. And uh, so she goes, okay. So she went to leave. And as she was by the elevator to, to like leave, one of the editors walked by and asked her if she wanted to throw on a bikini and do a photo shoot. And she goes, oh, okay, sure, why not? YOLO, let's do this. Um, and ended up 
it ended up working really well. They, by the time she got home, she said there was already a voicemail on her message machine saying we wanted to have you back into test for Miss October. And by the next year, she was already Playman of the Year. So she really just that her career trajectory was huge at that point. And then if you remember, you know, singled out and all that stuff was huge for her on MTV back in the day. So anyway, um, apparently Playboy Mansion parties, not as fun as one might think, (laughs) especially if you were the hot chick there. All right, let's move on. Number nine, Richard Simmons. Uh, We don't get to hear a lot from Richard Simmons, but he did uh, come out this week. And Richard Simmons has announced that he has skin cancer. There was a diagnosis that he has been dealing with um, and then put on a really alarming message that he's dying. Um, but it, uh, here, here's the deal. So he was diagnosed with skin cancer, goes on to Facebook this week and puts on a, a pretty lengthy Facebook status saying, mirror, mirror on the wall. What's that blemish, which is so small? There's a strange looking bump under my eye. I had a tube of neosporin, which I would put on it morning and in the evening it was still there it was time to call my dermatologist basically saying this thing was not healing up um i sat in a chair and looked through my magnifying mirror he told me he would have to scrape it and put it under the microscope and you know it made him pretty nervous and he comes back 20 minutes later and he says you got cancer so um, he had to go through and get the whole thing removed, which he says was actually pretty painful because there was there was he they didn't numb his skin to do the removal, which I mean kind of sounded surprising. Nothing to numb it at all is is kind of weird. But um, anyway, he he says that you know he he's been able to m- navigate through the whole thing. He said that he did you know. You cry a little bit as the the guy was burning his skin, but then um, he was forced to undergo a, a second round of the procedure, which was deeper and a little bit worse than before, which is, I, I think, pretty normal. Uh, you guys know my history with skin cancer, so... You know, you, you get like one layer taken off and then they test that and then you go back and get more removed and then they have to test that and it's a whole thing, but uh, he... He had a lot of people outpouring, wishing him well. I mean, Mr. Positivity himself, everyone was obviously pretty sad about the whole thing. And then he goes out there and he goes, I have some, this is another post. I have some news to tell you. Don't be sad. I'm dot, 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 dying. And then it finished up with, oh, I can see your faces now. The truth is we are all dying. Every day we live, we are getting closer to our death. (laughs) And I was like, what? what What are you talking about? And so his publicist had to come forward. And he says, he told the post, I can confirm with 100% certainty that Richard is not dying. In fact, he is very healthy and happy. The sole purpose of the post was meant to be inspirational. Um, I think he was just meaning to say, look, everyone's dying at the end of the day, live life to its fullest, except he freaked a lot of people out uh, on the heels of revealing a cancer uh, diagnosis. So it's weird. I, I feel like, and I don't know if I'm just more acutely aware of all these skin cancer stories, but like, I feel there are so many these days, um, you know, with Teddy Mellencamp, I don't know if any of you guys have seen Teddy's posts on social media, the scar that this woman has after having, um, cancer on her her back is wild like skin cancer um she had melanoma removed from her back but like the 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 scar makes mine look puny compared to hers um and then obviously richard and you if you remember uh uh, chloe had some stuff removed on her face and it just seems like skin cancer is so much more prevalent than it ever was or people were talking about it in the past so anyway, we are wishing him well. Love me some Richard Simmons. I remember seeing him right before he disappeared. He was the kindest, just nicest guy. So wonderful to be around. And uh, I hope that at the end of the day, he's happy in his life of privacy. All right. 
We are moving on to number eight, Travis Kelsey in talks to host, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? This is going to be a reboot for Amazon Prime Video. Um, they are considering him to be the new host. I mean, you know that obviously Jeff, Jeff Foxworthy hosted it before. I think John Cena also did a stint of this show. Well, they are thinking, hey, Travis Kelsey let's get him. He's already got this young demo, people that are Taylor Swift fans. I mean, think how many people tuned into the Super Bowl who were never interested or would have been interested in football in the past. He brings in a very different demo. He brings in a demo that uh, that uh, any show I think would want at this point. Um, he's he's hosted Saturday Night Live. He's hosted the reality CV- series. Oh, not really hosted, but been in the Catching Kelsey. He has the podcast with his brother. Um, Amazon Prime Video kind of like declined uh, making a comment here, but it seems like that would be a huge get if they are able to lock him down. It is instant audience um, of just people craving anything Taylor Swift related. And of course, he is one of the most Taylor Swift related topics uh, out there. So um, anyway, he's not obviously not the first, I would say, athlete po- to be out there hosting stuff. Michael Strahan has had a massive career hosting after his career ended. Peyton Manning has done a, a bunch of stuff. So I see Kelsey also following down that route. He's just got such a fun, boisterous personality that I, I see him doing really, really well in the, the hosting world. Number seven, Larsa Pippen and Marcus Jordan break up again. And this is nearly after nearly two years together. There was, we had done some stories a couple months back. I don't even know if it's been months, maybe a month and a half or so that they had broken up and then quickly got back together. Well, it sounds like they have officially ended their relationship. Um, And this was Larson, who is quote unquote, done with Marcus, according to E.T., um, uh, there was a brief reconciliation, reconciliation that I kind of referred to, uh, but she has decided to move on. Uh, the quote that was given to ET said, Larsa realized this relationship is just not the one for her after spending some time apart filming a new show. She wants to move on and focus on improving her life. They simply want different things out of life. I did think it was weird the way that that was stated. Like Larsa realized this relationship is not the one for her after spending some time apart I would have put a period right there. Why is it then, comma, filming a new show? (laughs) Like, what does filming the new show have to do with your love life? Um, It just seemed like a a very strange comment or statement or whatever. Uh, But basically, they went on to say that Larsa wants more out of her partner, someone who who is motivated like her. And I think that's a that's a big kick, basically saying the guy's a dropkick not wanting that's not motivated in life. And then she put up this kind of cryptic message earlier this week on um, on Instagram. She said, humble enough to know I can lose it all confident enough to know I can get it all back. Um, So anyway, they had uh, when the rumors of them first breaking up last month had kind of like peaked. It was they had taken a break due to unresolved issues about their relationship. And then a lot of people were calling them out saying that this was a publicity stunt relationship and that when they got back together, that was following the publicity stunt and keeping it going. Um, but she said that she was actually probably pretty hurt by all that because it was some of the the fellow housewives on the show that were kind of calling her out saying it was a publicity stunt or hinting that it could have been publicity. And, you know, she said there's no truth to that commentary. And it's unfortunate that her castmates would criticize a very personal matter that affects me and my family. So there you go. You're uh, you're not getting any more uh, Larsa and Marcus news, at least not now. And, you know, at the end of the day, whatever, they may end up getting back together once again, um, because that seems to just be how it works in Hollywood. People break up and they end up getting back together because they realize how much more publicity they got as a couple. So there you go. All right. Number six. 
Sheena Shea, uh, hinting that she maybe once had a uh, an orgy with John Mayer. <laughs> So this is the, obviously this would be a pretty juicy story, um, but basically on Tuesday's episode of Vanderpump Rules, she seemingly hinted that she was once in an orgy with uh, obviously the massive singer. She was um, playing this like confessional game, um, Never Have I Ever. Obviously, we played that when we were back in college, but they're still playing it at Vanderpump Rules. Um, And I guess when a producer asked her if she had an orgy, she basically copped up saying, yes, it was with an A-list celebrity. And then she said, once upon a time, my body was a wonderland. I'll say that. So that is alluding to the fact that, you know, John Mayer, because he had his 2001 hit, A Your Body is a Wonderland. And... There has been a lot of talk about her and her relationship with John Mayer over the years. She had basically talked about knowing him and uh, hanging out with him a bunch when she was on the Call Her Daddy podcast uh, a while back. And so no shock there. Uh, but still, I got to think she's married number one. So you're you're saying all this while your husband's got to hear you and listen to it and all of that. So that's kind of awkward. Um, but just that, I don't know, like, I feel like John Mayer is going to be kind of annoyed that thanks. Thanks for throwing out my my business to the world, Sheena. Not cool. Um, I guess she did meet John Mayer way back in the day when he was still dating Jennifer Aniston. And they had like, met at a bar or like a, a a grand Havana room at a party and she was serving them and they kept taking shots and she would take a shot every time because they were giving her one and she got super wasted. She didn't end up hanging out with them anymore. But after John and Aniston broke up, they kind of started to hit it off and were seeing each other for a little bit. So and apparently allegedly had some kind of orgy together. But uh, there you go. All right, Sheena. All right, number five. Number five is Megan Fox. Okay, I just want to preface this by saying very surprised that Megan Fox sat down for a full interview on Call Her Daddy. So she did the podcast this week, getting a lot of press, a lot of attention. But Megan Fox is not normally someone who sits down for massive interviews. So I was already shocked to see this, but... Megan Fox did confirm that her and Machine Gun Kelly's engagement was called off, but he is, quote unquote, still her twin soul. Uh, So, yeah, she sat down with Alex Cooper. They were opening up all uh, about all kinds of stuff. She got into plastic surgery. She talked about her relationship with uh, Machine Gun Kelly. Uh, I mean, she kind of was putting it all out there on the table. Again, shocked. Shocked. Megan Fox doesn't talk, guys. Megan Fox keeps very quiet all the time. And I think because most of her interviews have got her in trouble over the years when she's talked about Transformers or Michael Bay and not wanting to work with him. She lost jobs from it. So I feel like she's one of those people that tends to do everything she can not to do interviews. So to sit down with Alex was shocking. Anyway, um, getting into the plastic surgery stuff, she said, that's something I've been accused of six, seven, eight rhinoplasties, which is impossible. And what's funny is when you listen to the interview, it's not like Alex is pushing her on the plastic surgery stuff. Um, it's it's almost like Megan wants to get this information out to the world. Like she is annoyed about all the rumors. And um, if you remember that photo that came out after the Super Bowl, there was like a Super Bowl party that Machine and her and Travis and uh, Taylor were at. And her face looked really manipulated. Let's say that. It looked like she had had a lot of work done on her face. And so... People were just dragging her online. So I think maybe that is the fuel on why she decided to bring it up. But she said, you know, when she was in her like 20s, early 20s is when she actually got a nose job. And that was it. She hasn't had a bunch of nose jobs and all kinds of plastic surgeries. She's like, if I got that many, my nose would get uh, would just literally fall off. She's like, I've had a rhinoplastic surgery since, and I'm going to say when she was 23, it's been over a decade. I have not touched my nose since then. Um, And then she continued on with 
some of the other stuff. She's like, there's one thing I've done that I'm uh, so when it comes to like plastic surgery, she said there is one thing that she doesn't want to talk to. She's like, I'm gatekeeping it because it was really good and it's a not known plastic surgery. People don't really know about it. So she she didn't want to talk about what she's had done. And I'm now that she said that, now I'm like super fascinated. What the hell did she do that is some plastic surgery that isn't popular yet that could have, you know, kept her youthful? I don't know. She said she's never had a facelift. There's no mid facelift, no lateral brow lift um, or a regular brow lift. She's never done threads. She's never had uh, that like fat buckle, fat removal. Um, never had any fat removed, not even a, a liposuction or Brazilian butt lift, nothing. So anyway, she wanted to clear it all up. But yeah, as regard in regards to the engagement, she did say yes, they they broke it off. She didn't say whether or not they called it back on. So the status of their um, engagement is still up in the air at this point. Um, but she didn't, she didn't want to dive in too much. So there, there's, there's parts in this interview where she is super open and revealing a lot of stuff. And then she would just kind of shut down and be like, and that's where I'm going to leave it. So we're going to move on with this interview and not talk about it anymore. Um, but anyway, if you are into Megan Fox, go check out the Caller Daddy podcast. All right. Let's get on to number four, Oprah Winfrey talking about how she starved herself over the shame of her looks, saying that uh, people made fun of her weight as a basically a national sport for many, many years. She said that for 25 years, making fun of my weight was a national sport. And you know what? Honestly, she's not wrong. Uh, Oprah Winfrey, uh, she ba- she's battled very famously weight gain um, and had very famous weight loss segments and basically saying that her weight was so much a focal point of her career that it really took a mental toll on her for, for a very long time. She does have a new special that is out that is a celebration of weight loss medication, basically saying that, you know, like, Listen, I was I was shamed and I struggled and I it took her a really long time to get to the point in her life where she realized that like it was much more than just her, you know, people would say that she was lazy or why don't you just go out and exercise or why don't you have better self-control when it comes to eating and she goes it took me a long time to realize that like not everything was necessarily within my grasp that there people will accept alcoholism as a as an issue but they don't accept obesity as an issue and that people struggle with obesity and sometimes you need that extra help that maybe your body can't actually provide and it's not that people are truly being lazy it's that they have a a, a, str- a mental struggle that is much bigger or they have an addiction that is much bigger that that is what needs to be really dealt with. Um, and so, you know, she said, it took me a long time to realize that I, I had to, I had to move forward with getting myself help before I could actually start losing the weight. And she does say that, like, listen, there are now medication to help manage weight. And she, she didn't, she, she still hasn't specified what that medication is, which is crazy to me because you, you're taunting or you're flaunting that there's medication to help people. Well, tell people what you're using because it could help so many people out there. Not just like, hey, look, there's medications now, go get yourself some medication. But like, I'm using Ozempic or whatever because or maybe it just comes down to she wants to get paid. <laughs> maybe she just wants to be able to get paid to really flaunt or, or I keep saying flaunt, taunt this medication because that you know, you know the second that she says it, the the stock for that or the, the desire, the need is going to go through the roof because if Oprah slaps her name on something, it will sell. Um, and anyway, I just felt, I guess the reason that this story is in there um, in the rundown is because 
it really made me sad to read through some of the comments or things that Oprah had to go through for so many years, you know, referencing headlines that would call her bumpy, lumpy, and downright dumpy. Like, just crappy, man. Crappy to hear that people treated her so horrible, overweight. And I, I almost feel like you can't do that these days. You can't. This was something that maybe was a little bit more accepted back in, in the 90s or something. I don't know, 90s, early 2000s, where you had the blogs, you had the magazines, and like being mean to a celeb was, it was like it was okay. I don't think, I don't think a magazine could do this now and, and get away with it. I think people would boycott it. I think people would stand up for the celeb and say, absolutely not. You can't say that about Oprah or whoever else. But she had to, she unfortunately had fame at just the wrong period when that was acceptable. Um, anyway, just to go check out her special. Um, and if, the, if, the, if weight loss, uh, it, by the way, the name of the special is weight loss revolution. Um, if weight loss has been a struggle with any of you, um, I don't know, maybe what Oprah goes through or the, the the show that she is on, maybe it might help someone else out there get, you know, she's, she is really touting this medication. So go get your hands on some, I guess. Okay. What number am I on? I am on number three. Um, this was a big story this week. Number three, Selling Sunset star Christine Quinn's husband was arrested for domestic violence. Uh, and if you haven't seen the photos, go Google them. Uh, he is getting led out in cuffs in his bathrobe. <laughs> and uh, this is all after apparently or allegedly throwing a bag of glass um, at Christine. So um this is a wild story, and it obviously got a ton of spotlight today or this week because mostly because Christian, which is like a, the husband's name, hates the spotlight so much, and so now he's all over all the uh, all the blogs, all the websites, all the magazines, um, and he is this retired tech entrepreneur. He's forty two. Um, he was uh, arrested for assault with a deadly weapon after throwing that quote unquote, bag of glass, which I don't 100% know what that means. If it was a broken glass inside, whatever, um, at at her who is 35 and ended up striking their son. So he was let out in handcuffs by officers barefoot, wearing only a bathrobe following the incident. And uh, the son who's two years old was apparently the recipient of the bag of glass. Um but uh, yeah, he he's he's worth a ton of money, by the way. I didn't really know this about him, but uh, apparently he sold his company, Fodler, for fifty one million dollars before turning forty. He um, made uh, just a ton of money off of it. Um, what's funny about all of these stories is like that, that's all the details we know about the incident. Like, that's it. Then everyone else starts talking about their relationship, the show, anything else to kind of fill the articles, but we don't really know much more at this point. Um, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised over the next couple of days, we start getting some more details. Why was this a bag of glass? Was it broken glass? Was this, uh, you know, does it, what other details are out there for us? Um, and uh, haven't heard anything from her at this point, at least at, at the time of me taping this episode, um, I, I did not see any comment from her out there. So I, I won't be surprised. We'll, we'll probably hear something soon or comments from some of the co-stars or, or something. I'm, I would not be surprised. So anyway, that is number three. Quick, short, to the point. Don't throw bags of glass at anyone or you will get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to number two. Drake Bell calling out Ryder Strong and Will Freedy for not apologizing after supporting his abuser, Brian Peck, so many years ago. This story has been getting a lot of heat. If you don't know already, Drake Bell uh, took part in a Discovery TV show called Quiet on the Set, which uh, debuted on March 17th. It interviewed actors, including Drake Bell, um, about a popular 
about Dan Snyder run shows where there was a lot of toxicity on set, abuse, all kinds of other allegations that have come forward. Um, but basically, where it is now diverted because uh, Drake has taken part in this. There's been a lot of focus on him. He revealed that um, back in the day, uh, Brian Peck, who was very famously taken to court by a John Doe, an accuser, an underage accuser uh, for allegedly abusing him um, back in the day. Uh, that accuser is Drake Bell. Drake Bell's name has now been pulled to light, and he is now talking about it. He's being very honest about his paths, uh, his abuse, all of that stuff. Um, and he said, you know, when all of this happened and I went to court and I had to face Brian Peck, Brian rallied up a bunch of celebrities in Hollywood support, including Ryder Strong and Will Freedy. And he goes, you know, it was a very painful moment to be in court and look over and see people he knew, people that he had worked with, and they were supporting the wrong side. So basically, there is a fellow Nickelodeon star, Alexis Nicholas, who called out Strong and Friedel on Friday uh, in a social media post, basically saying, you know, hey, what do you guys have to say? You defended this uh, convicted sexual abuser and you weren't there for Drake Bell. Like, what's up at this point? Why haven't you even said anything? Why haven't you reached out to him? Uh, you know, and that is when Drake Bell entered the conversation, writing on this post saying, Will was 27 years old, and Brian told him what he did. Many people turned away and said, no, I won't write a letter, but they did. Will was not manipulated. Brian admitted to him, and he wrote a letter anyway, basically saying, the guy confessed to him, and yet he still supported him. He still looked me in the eyes in court and protected his buddy because he was more worried about his show. He was more worried about his career in Hollywood than defending uh, or than helping me out who was a victim at the time. And then Bell went on to say, then he worked with me on many episodes of Spider-Man years later. And this is referring to uh, to to, to Will, Will Friedel, saying he worked with me on many episodes of Spider-Man years later and never said a word to me about it. This is because they were told their letters are, are going to be made public. Everyone thought the letters would be sealed forever and no one would ever see them. This is their publicist telling them how to get ahead of the story. So anyway, this got a lot of attention this week. Um, obviously, this, this TV show uh, released their trailer. Everyone's been talking about it. Um, but and oh, and I got to say, Josh Peck also being pulled into the the uh, the dynamics of this. Josh Peck, not related to Brian Peck, by the way. Uh, Josh Peck was obviously um, stars uh, co-star with Drake Bell, but he was posting on social media. He put up this video this week on TikTok um, and, and people and it was basically I can't remember the exact dialogue. But the dialogue basically was him using a voiceover track that says, if I haven't talked to you since 2023 or even 2003, something like that, you don't exist anymore. And people thought, oh, are you speaking to Drake Bell? Because all of this information is coming to light. There's been some drama between them for many years. And apparently that is not the case. Drake came to his defense and said, listen, don't start going after Josh Peck. We talk. He is reached out to me. He has been very supportive of everything. Just because I don't mention him publicly doesn't mean that we don't have communications behind the scenes. So Josh Peck, he's in the clear. However, Will Friedel and um, and uh, what's his face and uh, Ryder Strong, not in the clear at this point. Um, I guess the the people behind the TV show reached out to both of them to say, hey, you guys have anything to say? You were defending this accused sexual abuser in court. Do you guys want to put out a statement? They did not want to put out a statement. They never heard back, uh, but they did do a podcast where they tried to defend a little bit of their actions saying that back in the day, Peck came to them and basically explained out the situation saying, so I kind of hooked up with this guy. Like, look, I'm, I'm going to plead guilty, but I hooked up with this guy who I didn't know he was underage. And so, you know, I'm 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 not totally guilty. I'm a little innocent and you guys have to believe me. And so 
you guys know my heart and that turned out to not be the case at all but they said they were kind of baited and switched and then when they were in court um they really felt like they were on the wrong side of of the whole situation of the case they felt like shit um and that they should not have been there but at that point you realize you're on the wrong side why haven't you reached out to drake bell all these years that to me is crazy like you messed up you you supported the wrong side now you have like if you're talking about it publicly reach out to him that i think that's all drake bell wants reach out to him apologize say you say you were convinced of something else explain your side and i'm sure drake will appreciate that that a, a lot so anyway um i'm sure we'll be talking about this um if Ryder or will end up uh s- s- saying some kind of apology or reaching out to him but right now i feel like drake bell is very fired up he's getting a lot of attention on him um anyway that, that's all that's all i got on that this story i feel like is constantly evolving so we'll We'll get some more information here. All right, let's move on to our number one story. Number one story, two weeks in a row, Kate Middleton. Uh, it's it's like the world's fascination is on Kate Middleton still. Every little bit and piece. There was another photo that came out uh, where people are saying that it was also photoshopped, um, that it was like a, a group photo of all the grandkids with the queen. And I see that Getty has like taken the photo and analyzed every single aspect of it to be like, here's Photoshop and here's Photoshopping. I assume there are hundreds of people right now going through every photo that Kate Middleton has ever released, trying to find more evidence of Photoshopping. Uh, But the UK government broke, has now broken their silence on Kate Middleton. They have come out and said that, listen, the, the Princess of Wales is a quote unquote, remarkable lady who deserves quote unquote, privacy. Uh, and this is a UK government minister who said this. Uh, she has become, obviously, Kate Middleton has become the subject of increased speculation and uh, conspiracy theories since the abdominal surgery in January. Uh, but they're basically saying, lay off her. She's a remarkable lady and we you should give her a little bit of privacy. I do agree. There is, she does deserve privacy. I think, um, I think they need to be more transparent, though. At this point, because there's so much speculation, the only way to kind of like squash it is to be more transparent. There's so many theories going around because we haven't seen her. Well, there's been some photos that popped up this week, but there's a lot of questions of, is that her? Is it a stand-in? Like, what the hell is happening? Like, can someone please be honest about what the hell is going on inside the palace? Um, and I think a lot of this would go away. If she did a, an IG live and just said, hey, it's Kate. I'm all good. Here's me. It's a live video. It's not manipulated. My bad on the photoshopping. Like, let's move along. Who knows? This may all get squashed come Easter. I think that's when she's supposed to make her first appearance um, when she goes public. But until then, people really are, I think, craving information. And the lack of information is making people crave it even more. Uh, That being said, Kate Middleton's medical records were reportedly involved in a security breach at the London Clinic where that she attends. Um, This is really scary, but hospital staff apparently attempted to access her medical records. According to a new report, the hospital is saying we have we have identified what happened. Nothing was released out. We have stop gaps in place to make sure that this information doesn't get into the wrong hands, that we can see all the information that when our staff logs in, we can see the the files that they're trying to access. We were able to stop it before it before anyone was able to get any information. But I think the curiosity is taking over people's lives. I'm sure someone lost their job over this over the curiosity or maybe there was a payday involved maybe one of the big magazines said if you can figure out what's happening we'll pay you you know fifty thousand dollars and that made it worth to someone on staff to go in and try to access this um either way 
I, I think this level of curiosity, she needs to squash it now before it goes too far. Um, and not, I mean, I say that like, I don't, I don't, I don't want, how do I, say, how do I phrase this? Because the Royal family it's like their their lives are so public. I, I don't feel like any person owes it to the world necessarily to, you know, say what's going on. But when it's the royal family, it it's like they put so much out there that you have to expect that when something is going on, if you don't say anything, it just causes chaos and, and mystery. And so if, just go out there. Go walk out. Do this. Go walk out on that balcony that you guys do all your royal stuff on in at Buckingham Palace and just wave to the people, you know, wave and say hi and it would all go away or do a live video from bed and say, look, I had abdominal surgery. Leave me the hell alone. I'm not feeling good. I don't want to go out in public. You know, I, I photoshopped. I'm over it. Anyway, I think that she could just squash it all a lot quicker and there is an a part of me that I'm surprised that they aren't squashing it quicker. Like they just feel like they're making a lot of the wrong moves with this. So I'd like to dive deep on this a, a little bit more. Um, you know, we had Kinsey on last week to talk about it. I think I'm going to reach out to her, see if she wants to come back on next week to really like spend some time talking about the Royals, what's happening, all the latest, because the curiosity around the Royals right now is at an all time high. I think this is, this is the level of Harry and Meghan style when they were leaving. It was like, everyone want to talk about it. Well, same thing right now. Everyone wants to talk about it. Like I've got people that don't care about entertainment news that never asked me about entertainment news, hitting me up about Kate Middleton. It is wild how they supersede pop culture and celebrity news. So Anyway, that is your top 10 countdown. Uh, I am apologizing that I did not have Adam here to banter with me today. And so I apologize if I let you guys down and it was boring or anything. Um, but uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Make sure you join our private Facebook group called Off the Record, uh, where I've been uh, watching all your guys' comments come through, all your responses, your posts, all of that kind of stuff. I love it. I love to see you guys in there talking, communicating. Uh, make sure you follow Hollywood Raw on all social media platforms. We're on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all of it. Um, Adam and I are also basically on all of it. So you can follow me at Dax Holt. You can find Adam at Adam Glenn. Make sure you take your time. Go leave a review so I can read it on air. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Bye. What's up, guys? If you liked that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.